Hey, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to another live episode of Between the Sheets podcast here on the United Broadcasting Network. We're on the first and third Friday of every month at 7 p.m. Pacific. You can see us live here the night of, and you can keep going back and watching us, but we also have a Facebook page that I'd like you to like. Um, follow me on Instagram at QTE Brat, and we also have a YouTube page, um, Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. Please call in tonight. Um, we have a wonderful guest. I'm so honored that she's taken some time out of her busy schedule because she's a politician, and you know how they're always very busy. <laughs> um, but call us at 323-524-2599. Tony's running the boards. Thank you, Tony, very much. Um, we have Mara Shane to my right. Hello. We have an old comer, newcomer, Margie Duran to my left. And zooming in, we have Ronnie Loiza. Amadeus and Cheryl Murphy. So I won't go farther on to just talk about stuff, but I really want to bring on our guest immediately. She is the first woman of color, lesbian councilwoman in the city of West Hollywood. She just won last November. And I want to welcome to Between the Sheets, Seppi Shine. Wow. Thank you so much. It's such Hi, a Seppi. pleasure. Hi, everyone. So good to see everyone. And um, I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I like your t-shirt. First of all, we did not color coordinate before, <laughs> before we came. But it was but, very lesbianic. But so. very lesbianic, because that's the way <laughs> that's we are. funny. And Cheryl's in blue, too. And she's, How about it? Oh, yeah. I mean, you. she's lesbian adjacent. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> she loves us. Um, but I love your t-shirt, Mighty Lesbian. Yeah. And that pretty much says it all about you, my dear. Yeah. Um, you, I mean, I've met you off and on throughout the years, but of course, prior to COVID, you know, Seppi was actually on her campaign trail and she was everywhere, every place. And she was, you know, of course, putting forth the rights, which she has been for over 20 years for the LGBT plus community. Um, I think it's still LGBT plus, right? There's no other, there's no other acronym That's right now. That's the easiest way to, to <clears throat> okay. refer. Yes. Um, but I've known, you know, she's been on boards. I mean, I served as most of you know on the Pride Board, the LA Pride Board, for 12 years. So I'd seen her off and on for those functions. Um, but you know, where did Seppi come from? I mean, like, 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 what makes someone want to do this? So we'll start with maybe the basics because I think everybody knows who you are, but let them know a little bit about behind the iron curtain. They know you as the councilwoman, but let us let us know who you are. So, first of all, you're a query or double Aquarius, uh, double Pisces, double Pisces. Sorry, with a Scorpio <laughs> rising. Yes, it's, it's sinuses today. Like that. And so, had, like you were born in Iran. I was born in Iran um, in 1977, and two years after that was the Islamic Revolution where. Um, we all, especially women, lost our rights in the blink of an eye. Um, and a year after that was the Iran-Iraq War. And wars in Iran um, and other countries aren't like in America where you turn on CNN and you see this faraway thing happening. It's right there. It's as if, if San Diego goes to war with uh, Mexico. Um, so my dad spoke up against the... Islamic regime because he was moderate and I you know I grew up in a Muslim family but I'm non-practicing um, and he was thrown in prison for it mm -hmm. and after that he made plans with my siblings here for us to uh, essentially escape and we did we came to America I was five years old and I was an undocumented immigrant a refugee for um, until I was 16. Did you come to California? Yes. Yeah. Came to Did California. you have family here? Is that why dad came here and moved the family here? Yeah. So three of my siblings were already here because they'd gone to school here um, for college and graduate school. And one of my brothers, so when I was before five years old, the only sibling I knew was my brother Rami, who was 11 years older than me. And we essentially, because they have a mandatory draft in Iran, um, when he turned 15, he would have to go fight in the war and every boy was getting killed. It was really horrific. So we smuggled him out of the country. Mm. With good reason. With good reason. And so I moved to Northern California and I lived there until 2006 and then I moved to Los Angeles. So you have a degree in? So I have a, a degree in um, business with a double concentration in accounting and management information systems, a minor in theater, 
and a Juris Doctor. So I went to law school, but you were talking about how I got onto this path of LGBTQ advocacy. In my second year of college, my girlfriend at the time, she was also Persian, but also Assyrian, and Assyrians are way more conservative than just Iranians. So we were in the closet. We didn't really, we knew two other gay people. One was my best friend from high school, and the other one was an Assyrian lesbian. Um, we were sitting in a coffee shop that was gay friendly. In Northern California? In Northern California, in San Jose. It was called City Espresso. And we we're sitting there, and we hadn't been there for a while because we were so deep in our studies. And we decided to go to City Espresso, and we noticed that the back patio area, which was always open, had walls built up. And so we were wondering, oh, that's strange. So we were sitting there, sipping on our lattes. Next thing I know, I see the manager walking back and forth. And I thought, oh, maybe that's the new owner. And I turned to my um, girlfriend and I said, you know, I think there's a new management and they might be homophobic because he won't stop staring at us. And we we're holding hands on the bench. And next thing after that, she's like, don't worry about it. Next thing I knew, manager and a police officer <gasps> is standing yeah. above us. The police officer looked down at us and said, you two need to get up and leave. The management doesn't want your kind in this establishment. And what year was this? This was 19, uh, so 1997. Wow. And then he blew a kiss and winked at me. Oh, wow. So we were, we were mortified, especially as immigrants who had escaped a war-torn country. Um, it was even scarier for us. So we, we got up, we were crying, we left, we lost the safe space. It was... Um, really uh, disempowering. We got in our car, we were driving around figuring out what to do. Later in the day, I turned to her and I said, I'm tired of feeling powerless. We need to go to law school, learn the law, and stop this from happening to others. And we both did that, and I became an LGBTQ advocate. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Much wow. respect. See, I went to law school too, and I got into the entertainment industry. <laughs> so I was like, because they're just, they're screwed up too. Um, oh, but sure. I but I never practiced, I never wanted to. Um, but do you not feel that, the, like, did you practice law? Um, yes, I, I've practiced for many years, so I, I currently um, practice law now because the city council uh, position is part-time. Oh, okay. It's, it's full-time, but part-time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have my own practice. I do business law and trademarks, but I'm also an energy healer, so I'm a Reiki master. And oh, I have wonderful. another healing business that I... So do. getting back to, you know, mm -hmm. your heritage, Yeah. you know, being gay, obviously, maybe not with your parents, but you know, within that mindset, obviously not so good, not very welcoming. Yeah. So when did you realize you were gay? When did you come out with your parents? How did they react to it? So I, um, because my family structure was such that being an, um, you know, an immigrant, everything at home was Persian and everything outside of the home was American. And it was two different worlds for me. And so I, uh, Iranian culture is very paternalistic, very um, traditional marriage oriented, um, very homophobic um, historically. So I didn't even know what um, being a lesbian or being gay was, but I had a crush in Iran on the next door neighbor who was a girl <laughs> when I was five, before we left. And I was sad that we were leaving and I was leaving her behind. And so, in my mind. Um, so I, I, I remember when, do you remember the Playboy channel yes. when it was scrambled yeah, and yes. we're all trying to make out? So I, we, my cousins and I would like watch a scramble when thinking we're getting away with something. And I was always staring at the women's bodies <laughs> and my girl cousins were staring at the guys. I remember when I was maybe nine thinking, hmm, how come they're looking at the men and I'm looking at the women? And then I forgot about it. But in high school, once the hormones kicked in, I, I, um, I told my friends that I was bisexual. Mm -hmm. I'd never been with a woman. I hadn't even had an emotional connection really with a woman other than the crushes here and there. But I thought saying bisexual was the right thing to do. I did Not the same thing. Yeah. I did the same thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It was an easy transition. Although, you know, my wife is bisexual and she is validly bisexual and I'm completely against biphobia. I don't think all bisexuals are going through transition. But at the time, I that was for me. It was an easy way. And then um, I kissed so many boys and they were, you know, all frogs. And then I, <laughs> I kissed, I, I had my, first, this girl came up to me and she's like, let's go, you know, 
I want to invite you to watch Playboy magazines at my house. We're 17. I was like, oh, okay. Um, and we made out at her house and I knew it right then. It was, she was, she wasn't a frog and it was fireworks. There was all the things I would see on TV and feel in romance show, uh, TV shows. So I went home, called my best friend and I was like, oh my God. I am not bisexual. I'm totally a dyke. I have to have a strategy to come out to my Persian family. And so I I developed a strategy because I've always felt that I just need to be authentically myself in my life. And I didn't want to be in the closet. Mm -hmm. um, my dad was very homophobic. So I put off coming out to him. I weaned my mom into my coming out process. So I, I stopped dating boys, obviously, after that. And I was like, no. Um, <laughs> And she saw me with girls all the time and she wondered, you know, what's going on. I was like, oh, nothing, nothing. So when I was um, 18, I gave her the book, Dear Ellen, which Ellen DeGeneres' mom wrote about Ellen's coming out. I said, mom, I want you to read this. She's like, okay. <laughs> and then I gave her another book called Prayers for Bobby <laughs> about this boy who had a very religious mom who basically he felt so much guilt and shame as a result of her belief um, in her version of the homophobic scripture that he ended up committing suicide. Oh, oh God. Um, and then I took her to a coffee shop and I came out to her. <laughs> and Do you know she had read the books? She did read the books. Okay, that's good. She, did, she definitely read the books. And she had a very hard time, as most parents do. It wasn't like, oh, great. It was difficult, but first she's like, just be with as many women as possible because she thought it might be a phase. phase. <laughs> always. It's always yeah. a phase. Yeah. My mother thought it was a phase. Yeah. Then she thought I was then she was telling everyone I was bisexual. I'm like, What are you doing? Don't do that. And then um yeah, and then you know, and I think she finally got it when I had my first lover partner, mm -hmm. um, seven years. But you know, it was like my roommate. You know, it was like the yeah. roommate. It's like the roommate Friend. that never leaves, you know? Yeah, the one that never leaves. <laughs> that gets invited and brought to every single function. Yep. It took many years, and it took a lot of education for many, many years for my family, because I also got into a relationship, a 10-year relationship, and... Um, they would call her my friend whenever yeah. we went to places. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, and every time I would correct them, no, this is my girlfriend. Eventually, when she and I split up, because we were domestic partners, and so we had to go through an actual divorce, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's when it really clicked for the family. Because for one thing, they're probably like, oh, we can't blame it on her, her, her partner anymore. And they saw that the um, depression and and difficulty in that separation was exactly the same that they'd seen my brother go through with mm -hmm. his divorce. Mm -hmm. And so that's when things started really turning around and they started coming around and one by one, like, I remember my brother, uh, my eldest brother came out to his friend about me because I was at a, um, at a birthday party up north and his friend was like, ooh, your your sister's hot. And he's like, she's a lesbian. So I was like, oh, great <laughs> job. That's good. <laughs> and so um, it just took yeah. time but and persistence. But yeah. Seppi, when did cultures. you come out to your dad? Was it, did your mom help you or did you yeah. tell him? So um, I was going to come out to my dad when I moved out and uh, in when I was in law school. Um, but after my first semester of law school, he uh, was diagnosed with uh, mm -hmm. leukemia mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. he was hospitalized pretty much right away and he passed within five months. Oh, oh I'm, I'm so, so sorry. sorry. Thank you. It was, it was really oh. difficult. Although I, you know, I'm, I'm a medium. And so I started connecting with his spirit right away after, and he came into my dreams and he was like, I'm, I love you. It doesn't matter. And so we, we got closer afterwards after he mm -hmm. passed than we were ever close when he was here. <sighs> Um, so. I agree. I mean, it's so funny. It's, it's like true. you're speaking my language, my story, mm -hmm. you know, because even my dad, I mean, he was Italian, you mm -hmm. know, Vito, you know, mm -hmm. and my mother knew right away, you know, I mean, I came out, to, not came out to her right away. It took a while, but I had the same sort of yeah. strategy <laughs> and um, she was accepting of it in a way. She never really did anything horrible to my partner. She always accepted, but yeah. my dad he just always liked them. I mean, he never, mm -hmm. I, you know, so, and then, you know, I, we never really talked about it. Like I never came out to my dad and said, dad, I'm a lesbian. I never did. I don't know why I never did. I thought 
you know, I think he figured it out, right. you know, and he does well, not. Gay, gay Ann and Seppi, were you guys um, affectionate with your girlfriends in front of your fathers or your family? Like, you know, holding hands, kissing? I'm another but... generation older than her. No, yeah. I was not. <laughs> I still am not. I still, I, yeah. I do not do, and I think it's my age. Um, it's public displays of affection. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm in like a gay pride, when we're surrounded or we're in a gay bar, I'm fine with it. The minute I walk onto a street, mm -hmm. I don't. And it's a little bit of fear. It's a little mm -hmm. bit of fear mm -hmm. that there are crazy people out there and I don't want to be another victim. Yeah. I really don't. Yeah. I get it. Mm -hmm. I I um I felt that fear before I went to move to San Francisco and I living in San Francisco because uh, I went to law school there and lived there for seven years really helped me um, deal, uh, er eradicate my own internalized homophobia around all of that. Yeah. And I'm very affectionate. I mean, I'm not out in public making out or whatever, um, but I don't have a problem kissing my wife in public or my prior girlfriends. But my first girlfriend, when my dad was still alive, we were both still in the closet and it was a very wow. short amount of time. So it's, he knew we lived together and he actually stopped saying homophobic things. Mm -hmm. He used to, every oh. time there was a pride um, on TV, he used to say like, they should put him on the island and kill them all. And when wow. he, when he started, I could tell he was suspicious. Mm -hmm. He literally, one day I remember it was a pride thing and we were watching and my cousin knew I, I had already come out to my cousin who was there too. He just looked over, then he looked at me and he just ate his food. He didn't wow. say wow. anything so he knew. negative. Wow. He knew. He knew. Right. Do you think your mother told mm -hmm. him anything? No, because I've had lots of conversations with my mom, and she she hasn't. But my mom was very much um, an advocate for me, and I've had other father figures in the family that have been uh, that I came out to, and that really was healing their acceptance or their evolution mm -hmm. to. Um, being advocate, acceptance and advocates. One of the most beautiful moments I've had with my family, other than my uh, wedding with uh, my wife, Ashley, because they were so excited and there was no homophobia whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They were so happy that I got married. But one of the most amazing nights of my life was my 40th birthday party. We, um, I planned a trip to Palm Springs and I had about 36 family members and a few friends come join us. And it was so much fun. And one night we went to an Italian restaurant and my brother got up and to do a speech and he had this poem about how grateful he is for all these different things in his life. And at the end, he said, I'm so grateful for my baby sister. Oh, and wow. he said, you know, he admitted it was ignored. He's like, when you came out, we we weren't completely supportive of you. And that must have been so hurtful. But you've been so strong and you've always been yourself. And we went from tolerating to acceptance and now you've made us a better person because of who you are. And now we're advocates for your community. Oh, that's wow. wonderful. Wow. So. God, I wish this was a movie because it really, I know, I know. Right? it sounds like one. It's great. Everyone, you're listening to Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network with our guest, Seppi Shine, Councilwoman West Hollywood. Seppi Shine, please call in 323-524-2599. So, Seppi. <laughs> <laughs> so, Seppi. Please, people, feel free to ask more questions. Yeah, Seppi, I want to say you have your story is one of the most beautiful stories I've heard. Um, Thank you. I hope you, I, I assume you tell it a lot, but the amount of love that I feel coming from your family in the, in the word that you said evolution, I've heard of people having more quote unquote accepting families yeah. without evolution, if that yeah. makes sense. Uh, doing a lot of lip service. It sounds like you had a lot in your family from their hearts uh, making peace and then coming toward you. Yeah. It's really beautiful. Thank you. Very meaningful. I mean, you actually hit the jackpot on this show. We have clairvoyance, psychics, <laughs> Reiki healers. I mean, you're oh, amongst your own kind here. Awesome. I, I love know. It. I, I love think it. you I'm a water it. sign like you. That's about it. I can't. <laughs> 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 it makes you one just by nature. So, yeah. Go ahead, Can I just ask, Seppi? Absolutely. Uh, how how did you get into Reiki then? I mean, I know you're you're a natural healer just with the amount of compassion that we're all feeling, mm. you know, from you and your family. Did um, you just naturally uh, get introduced to Reiki or is it something yeah. that you sought out? So in high school, I was very much um, 
in tune with my creative and spiritual side. And when mm-hmm. I went to, you know, I did theater and dance and modeling and uh, all of it. Just um, when I went to college, I just focused so much on studying and very uh, the other side of my brain. And law school was even worse because it was like, mm-hmm. nope, no time for anything. Mm-hmm. It's it's right. very competitive. It's it's a lot of um, hard work and a lot of reading. And so I shut off my creative and spiritual side, really. And then um, when I was going through the journey of separating from my ex, um, a year before that, a close friend of ours, there were a couple, there was a lesbian couple. One was an attorney, Sally, and her partner named Megan. Megan was diagnosed with metastasized melanoma. Mm-hmm. And the doctor said to her, you, you know, you have tumors, you have spots in your lungs, you, you're going to have six months to live. And she was a chiropractic student. Um, when I left my ex, Ben Trish, I moved in with Sally and Megan for three months trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And Megan would get the radiation treatments and then go to a Reiki healer and she'd come home and tell me about it. And so I was fascinated. I didn't know what the heck Reiki was. I had no clue. And I was doing litigation at the time. So I was traveling, you know, working 80 hours Mm -hmm. a week, traveling all the time. And so I kind of just filed it in my brain. And when I moved to Los Angeles, um, I had a spiritual reawakening and a creative renaissance. I'm a poet. So I wrote a lot of amazing poetry um, when I moved here. But I also started getting anxiety and the anxiety got worse and worse and worse. I couldn't even do my taxes. LA That's can do how that debilitating. Too. Mm. It LA was. LA really is yeah. an ang- like an anxiety ridden <laughs> yeah. city and bubble. It, it's yeah. just because you have every all this frenetic energy. It's just... yeah. Yeah. And so the anxiety then spiraled into depression. Mm -hmm. And that's when I was on the boards. Nobody knew what was going on. I was a co-president of the LGBT Lawyers Association, strong advocate in the community. But I was really having really heavy depression. You weren't married then, were you? No. Okay. No. Um, And then one night, uh, so Megan actually ended up living 22 months, which was unheard of. Mm -hmm. And then she Mm -hmm. passed. And she came into my dream one night. and she was wearing red, pushing a red cart. And I remember waking up thinking, oh my gosh, she's giving me a message. I need to, maybe I should look into Reiki. Maybe that'll help me. Mm-hmm. So I found a Reiki master, master Kataka Gara, took her Reiki, entire Reiki course. And then I started uh, Soli Loom, which was, um, I created this word, which means to light the soul. And I just started getting Reiki clients left and right. And I thought, this is so easy. Why wasn't the law practice so easy to build up these <laughs> clients? But it was because it's part of my purpose, which I later channeled, which is to illuminate. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. And, what is, and what's your real name? Um, my real name? Your real, like your real, it's Seppi, Seppi. but it's a, it's a longer, it's oh, short. Oh, Seppi, Seppi de. Seppi and what de. does it mean? It means dawn. Which is light. Yes. Exactly. Did you ever get any visitations again from Megan? No. Mm. Not um, not in a dream. Mm-hmm. Well, in other ways? Um, I've I've connected with her spirit since and thanked her. That's greatly. great. But um, that mm. was that was it. But my dad came through because I took a channeling class and it was so I mean, he was such a pushy Iranian, him and my little cousin who had passed years ago. They did this one part where they're like, we're going to channel um, somebody from your family. And then two of the people were my family members. It was really embarrassing. But he pushed his way through. He's like, I got to say something. And oh, my goodness. The woman, yeah, the, the woman was channeling him wow. and my cousin. <laughs> so, I mean, obviously, you know, yeah. from for, never, let's put the Reiki aside. Yeah. You did the law school. Mm-hmm. How did you get into politics? Because not all lawyers get into politics. Yeah, so it was actually more adjacent to my advocacy in the community. And West Hollywood is, you know, one of the uh, gay meccas of the uh, country. And I lived in West Hollywood. I moved to West Hollywood in 2009. I've lived here for 12 years. I haven't lived anywhere this long ever. I just, <laughs> I love this this city. And um I was serving, I served a lot of, I did a lot of volunteer work with the human rights campaign. Mm -hmm. This is a human rights campaign shirt. And Mm -hmm. my friend, uh, Sue Lavacari, who I served with on the board of the steering committee in Los Angeles, 
She was appointed to the Lesbian Gay Advisory Board for the city of West Hollywood, and she served one year, and then for whatever reason, she, she told her appointing council member, who was um, former council member John Heilman, that she's resigning. And she had told him that she has someone great in mind to replace her, and it was me, but she hadn't communicated that to me. <laughs> so I was at Dyke March in 2018 um, in West Hollywood, and I went over to say hello to him. He's like, oh, I've heard your name from Sue. I heard you're interested in being on the Lesbian Gay Advisory Board. And I said, oh, uh, oh, yeah. And I, I, I didn't <laughs> want to make her look bad. I'm like, yeah. I mean, it's, it was really an honor. And I knew that it existed. I thought, sure. And so I went and interviewed with him. And he appointed me to the board. And when I was doing my work as a city official on the board, I started to really learn a lot more about the city and how great it is, but also the things I wanted to change. And as a resident, there were things I always right. noticed. Um, and it really struck me that in learning about the history of the city, there was only one queer woman who was a lesbian for one year when the city was created and none since, no women of color. Um, just as an Iranian, we don't have a lot of representations. And I'm actually also the first out LGBTQ Iranian elected anywhere in the entire world. And I knew how important mm -hmm. representation is. And so um, I decided to run. Of course, many women asked me to run. I mean, it was like- In the six, world? Yeah, in the whole world. Blows your mind, wow. doesn't it? It's, yeah, we have got not really come so far. Um, I mean, I, the I men want us Europe. to believe we have, but no. Um, but is the a lesbian advisory board still around? So the lesbian gay advisory board is around. And um, one of the things that I um, helped co-sponsor was for them to um, change, look at their purview and see where it needs to be changed and expanded and also uh, making their name more inclusive. Now, do you need to be a resident of West Hollywood to serve on that? Not on that board. Um, mm -hmm. You need a, you could be a resident or have a strong community um, connection to West Hollywood. You, you know what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm thinking right now. Yeah. Um, because I knew when it was started. I mean, yeah. I, I served on the board of LA Pride and I knew it when it was starting because they yeah. were very involved. Yeah. It was sort of my, 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 I was like leaving almost, right. but they, you know, they had some issues um, with the thing. Now, I don't know why, but the L LA Pride, as people knew it, CSW, is now moved out of West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And I think they're going downtown. Is the mm -hmm. city of West Hollywood planning to do, once we get back to normalcy, is the city of West Hollywood going to continue with the LA Pride Festival? So um, CSW pulled out of West Hollywood. Um, they had plans to go downtown but that because of the pandemic hasn't, it's, everything's been virtual. Um, I'm actually on the Pride subcommittee because on city council, we get to volunteer to be on different subcommittees. And I'm on the Pride subcommittee with council member D'Amico and we have uh, recently given input and had a public meeting on an RFP to give out and CSW and other organizations when the RFP comes out are more than welcome to apply. Um, I personally would love to have um, the Pride March in mm -hmm. West Hollywood as well oh. as our, you know, I'm uh, the 2019 Pride, in my opinion, was incredible. Mm -hmm. But we spent a lot of money yes. and it was billed as LA Pride. Um, personally, I, um, West Hollywood community members, have indicated that they want this to be West Hollywood pride. Mm -hmm. So um, there's gonna be changes and I think it's gonna be good for who, for us yes. and whoever we coordinate with. Cause some of those issues that were there with LA pride were because um, there wasn't a correct process in place. And I think this will correct. remedy that. Correct, which is probably ultimately why I left. I mean, granted yeah. I was the VP of entertainment mm -hmm. for 12 yeah. years yeah. and I would go to those meetings and it right. would be extremely frustrating but I really enjoyed what I was doing to bring, you know, my connections, talent, you know, that, that right. hadn't, that would never play a pride, yeah. you know, so I did it for that purpose. Right. But other than that, I wasn't really happy. And also, by the way, um, next November, there's going to be um, 
there's a council member who has indicated that he's not going to run again. So that's an open seat. Um, mm -hmm. There's also um, another, our mayor, Lindsay Horvath, mm -hmm. is running for the Board of Supervisors oh, seat. Wow. And she's been endorsed by Sheila Kuehl yeah. and, and another supervisor. So um, she most likely will make the runoff. With so, I, so there may be two open seats. And then there's a third council member running again. So with those open seats, that means that when those people get replaced, the people they've appointed um, probably won't be picked up by the new people who win. So there's opportunities to get on the Lesbian Gay Advisory Board at that time. Um, and people can, uh, you can all apply if you're interested in. So involved. you guys want LA Pride to be separate from WeHo Pride? Did I understand that correctly? No, what I said is um, LA, we need um, branding to be very clear that this is West Hollywood Pride. That makes sense. Okay, Is that yeah. separate from LA Pride? Or I can explain. LA Pride was a nonprofit that was set up oh. and they just happened to do the Pride Festival obvious for obvious reasons in West Hollywood for many years. But now they withdrew and there's a lot of political stuff that I will not get into. Mm -hmm. And I heard, like I said, and I, I'm not part of it. I haven't been part of it, but it broke my heart to find out what happened and what was going on. So the city of West Hollywood is now stepping up, wanting mm -hmm. it to be West Hollywood Pride. Oh, just that. Okay. Because, and, and that would be sort of strictly the city of West Hollywood, but Obviously, you'll do RFPs and stuff, and other people can be involved, but to make it more yeah. inclusive instead of one strict organization governing the entire Pride Festival. I see. Okay. So, Steffi, do you work as, a, as, as an attorney in private practice or no? Yeah. What, what kind of uh, law? Uh, business law and trademarks. Oh, oh yeah. interesting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, I have a dumb question. Okay. Where are all the lesbian bars in West Hollywood? Where the hell yeah, did they go? Can you do something about that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, actually, I have, I have, I have um, passed something that, in my capacity of what I can do, is that um, uh, myself and another council member worked on an item to for us to come up with incentives for um, LGBTQ-owned businesses. Um, and lesbians can certainly take advantage of those incentives. Um, BIPOC-owned businesses, um, women-owned businesses, and also residents, because a lot of residents don't actually own in the city, and it's a shame that yeah. it's just yeah. from outside coming in. Mm -hmm. So those we gave direction. It passed unanimously, and staff is going to be coming back to us with what they've come up with. It hasn't come back yet to city council. Now, West Hollywood is what rent control, correct, or not anymore? So uh, we're rent stabilized. Rent stabilized, um, okay. And it's... Uh, the when the rent stabilization ordinance went into effect, everything that's uh, was there beforehand is falls under our rent stabilization ordinance. Eighty percent of our city is renters, so um, a lot of renters live in our city. And you know, I'm very pro renters' rights. Um, and we, as a council too, we are very uh, pro renters, and we do a lot to protect our renters. Recently, I actually expanded our tenant harassment ordinance to provide I, more I really, protections I should do to a tenants. session. I just feel like it's just hands over. <laughs> Who what? knows? Huh? Okay, what? So we all back? Back? <laughs> what, Ronnie? You, yeah, the screen went down for a second. Oh, okay. So, sorry about okay. that. Okay. Yeah. All right. But um, now, West Hollywood has not known to be very diverse. Uh, people of color. Yep. So... 80% of our residents in our last count are um, white residents and the rest of the 20% are members of the BIPOC community. Um, but we are diverse when we have tourists. So we have a lot of right. BIPOC people visiting our city, which is really why one of the, uh, one of the things, ideas I campaigned on so strongly was a social justice task force in our city made up of black, indigenous, and people of color who um, would come up with uh, policy recommendations to city council to help us dismantle systemic racism. Um, and that was the first item I introduced at council when I got sworn in by my wife on December 7th um, and our first meeting and it passed unanimously. We've created this incredible task force and right now they're working uh, to do what they need to do to let us know uh, what we need to do and what policy-wise 
to um, help make our city not only more diverse, but really dismantle the systems in place that mm -hmm. um, create the lack of diversity. Now, COVID, <laughs> obviously, not only for, you know, the worldwide mm -hmm. has created, you know, a lot of businesses closing. So how is West Hollywood? So you're saying with these incentives and stuff that are coming out that your that your initiative is to bring people back in. So well, like because I know a lot of people who have places in West Hollywood, it's like to rent those places, especially on Santa Monica is truly unaffordable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, look, it's no it's no um, secret that not only are uh, is the price of housing um, unaffordable, and we have an unaffordability housing crisis, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. the commercial spaces are are also unaffordable to small businesses, and uh, so the incentives were in place for that. I also did an item where um, we allocated certain funding for the most vulnerable businesses last year around. Um, it was, I think it was November when they said, okay, we're shutting down again. And the businesses were just like, oh my God, we're gonna be decimated because of that, mm -hmm. the other surge we were in. So we wanted to make sure our most vulnerable, vul vulnerable businesses could get some kind of funding. And um, we knew it wasn't gonna be a ton of businesses because we made it very narrow, but I think um, three or four businesses got about $5,000 each from the city, something like that. But along with that, we also, um, it was a whole package for small businesses that I helped pass with uh, Mayor Pro Tem Meister. Um, and that was included business roundtables with our business community to hear what they needed so we can quickly act um, and be nimble about that. And then the other part of it is a business recovery task force that um, has one seat from the chamber and the rest are gonna be appointed by council. Uh, to come up with, um, again, policy recommendations for recovery, uh, business diversification, and success in the city of West Hollywood. So we haven't even appointed that uh, task force yet, but that's going to be coming up soon. So the city of West Hollywood is considered between what street to the east, west, north, south? Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, it's kind of jagged, so it's a little hard as far as the uh, north-south. But um, when you pass Doheny, Coming mm -hmm. from the west, you'll see our sign, and uh, you're in West Hollywood, and you go all the way to La Brea, um, and you go to City of LA. So we're Beverly Hills, LA, and then um, Sunset is is the boundary, but it kind of j uh, zigzags, Jagged. yeah, okay. and <laughs> also um, Melrose on the other side. So, but you know, there's one thing I just got to say. This may sound dumb, but I used to live in Beverly Hills, and I used to walk to WeHo yeah. to go to the gym and, and stuff. The only reason I don't go there now, I live in the valley, I live in the hood, is parking. That <laughs> is it. So I wish you would make it you, you, you just Seppi yourself. No, I'm kidding. Um, I wish you would make it Uber and Lyft friendly when this pandemic allows and parking lots because I hate parking in West Hollywood. Yeah. And that's the only reason I don't go. So, I know that sounds ridiculous, okay. but that is why. So here's the thing. Um, we have done um, work on creating more Uber and Lyft drops in the city. So just answered that question is become friendlier. Um, as far as parking, we have the library parking lot that yeah. uh, we're built. We're constructing the new uh, ARC building and renovating the park. And hopefully at the end of this year, it's going to be open. One of the library parking lots had to close, but we have the other parking. Um, the reality is we're in a climate crisis, Ronnie, and yeah. um, the issue that you're having really isn't the lack of parking. Um, what it is is the lack of uh, transportation options for you to be able to get rid of your car, which is a regional problem. We're actually working with the um, metro to help bring the Crenshaw, Northern Crenshaw line through the awesome. city of West Hollywood. Woo! And that'll yeah. be 90,000 yeah. people, give 90,000 people the opportunity to get out of their cars, which cars are really destroying part yeah, of the I take the, the train to LA yeah. to go to the theater, yeah. but I won't go to West Hollywood. But I know that I can park in North Hollywood, mm -hmm. take the metro to downtown. Yeah, you can actually take a city line. No, no, no. You can, if you look up on our website, depending on what time you want to come through, if you take the train to Hollywood, you can get on the city line and it'll bring you into our city. So we do have a, a connection and it's free too. 
So you can use the city line and there's buses that you can hop on. It's only about uh, 10 minutes to come into the city as well and Uber and Lyft and all that. But we're working on it to make it even easier because the Crenshaw line will connect to the Hollywood Highland Station. I, mean, I lived there for 20 years and I hopefully will be back soon. I own a house there. And um, I noticed though how much people did not know that there was some free transportation or that the bus had great lines and actually was the it was the top running bus line in America, but nobody <laughs> nobody really wanted to do it, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. And there's gonna be probably hesitation right now yeah. with COVID and being on But the there are some the really good free services in, in West Hollywood for hopping around. Yeah. I mean what but, I like about West Hollywood is that you haven't sold out. Meaning it's not all big box as businesses and establishments. You still have those I'll call it mom and pa um, yeah. businesses, yeah. you know, and that that's what I like about a city. You know, the minute something goes so commercialized, yeah. it's like I don't want to go there. Like I, I don't want to eat at Olive Garden. You know, <laughs> I want to <laughs> eat. You know, I, I you know I, I like that there's the sir and there's the, the and I like that there's still those great and they're great. West mm -hmm. Hollywood, by the way, has some amazing restaurants. If no yeah, one yeah, knows that, they really yeah. do. Um, but that's what I like: the quaintness, the charm. And yeah, it's gay. So of course I feel more comfortable going there. Parking's a pain in the ass, but that's why you make friends that live not so far away that you park, get their sticker, and then you all Uber or walk. <laughs> yeah. You make friends. Yeah. And I, I'm working on some initiatives now, which I can't really talk about because it hasn't come to, on the oh, agenda. Come on. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I am working with uh, on some initiatives that are going to help our smaller businesses and also help to create affordability uh, for uh, commercial businesses in the city too, so to rent. So the, those are those are coming up, maybe for a future show. What's your before you became involved in, in in the council? What was your favorite part about living? Like, what did you love about living in WeHo? Oh, um, walking down the street, holding my wife's hand, and going to our uh, favorite three restaurants within a yeah. block of our home. Okay, what's your favorite <laughs> three restaurants? Um, currently, uh, Akuma Sushi and uh, Ramen and Sushi is one of the best sushi restaurants um, for the vegans. Uh, Pura Vida is mm -hmm. incredible. And I got to say, um, God, I have, I'm, I'm a foodie, so a lot of them are my favorite. And we do have a ton of great restaurants. Um, Marco's Trattoria is a great <laughs> Italian restaurant on the corner of uh, Havenhurst and... <laughs> Uh, Note that people. Yeah. <laughs> it's been around for a while. Yeah, it has yeah. been. It has, it been, has been, around been. It has been around for a while. Yeah. So, um, so you're a lawyer, mm -hmm. part time. Yes. Counsel and enjoy the the ocean. So, is that you? Sorry about that. Is yeah. that Mara <laughs> with her voice yeah. on? I don't. Understand and we love going. Yeah. The volume's down. We love going to restaurants in yeah. our city. And now, does your wife cook? Um, sometimes she was vegan for a while. So she cooks the most incredible vegan dishes, but that's all she should be cooking. <laughs> so <laughs> she did it. She did a chicken dish good. Uh, now that was good, but she doesn't really love to cook like I do. I get relaxed cooking when I have time. But and how, yeah. And how were you? How long you In married? WeHo because I mean I didn't drive. I didn't. I mean I yeah. walked everywhere. Um, we've been married. We got married in. Uh, uh, December uh, 10th, 2014. Oh, so. so that's my mom's birthday, December 10th. Oh, oh sweet. <laughs> she, she yeah. passed, but yeah. that's that's her birthday. Yay! Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm um, so sorry. Yeah. So we're back on. I don't know if you guys saw it out there. You were listening to Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. I think we were down for a moment. No, it said the live, in, live thing interrupted. So sorry about that. Don't know what happened. So we're continuing with our guest, Seppi Shine, Councilwoman Seppi Shine for the city, Seppi Shine for the city of West Hollywood. Please call in 323-524-2599. You're watching Between the Sheets here on United Broadcasting Network. Mara, I know you have stuff to ask, Seppi, because you always do. You <laughs> always do research. It's funny. It's reminding me of the whole plot line with um, in the L Word Generation Q with Bet and her whole um, running for you know, for office. And I just wonder when you're on the board of the lesbian and, and the gay um, committee, is that what it's called? Advisory board. Advisory board. Mm -hmm. What are some topics that you guys discuss just pertaining to that community? So when I was on the lesbian gay advisory board, first of all, there was um, 
different events that we um, would have subcommittees for. So we put on Dyke March oh. with, in collaboration mm -hmm. with staff um, every year. Uh, we actually also uh, organized the world's first uh, Buy Pride celebration oh. in yeah 2019. And again, they did it in 2020. I wasn't on the board because what happened is I um, we need more funding for them and all sorts of different issues that come up Do at you the time. work with the center? So they, so I'm not on that board anymore. I'm on the city council. But when I was, uh, yeah, we, we actually contract with a lot of different uh, organizations as a city. And the center is one of them that we oh, collaborate cool. with. Oh, cool. Very cool. Yeah, we actually invested $400,000 in the new building, the housing oh, yeah. that they built. Ah. Um, for LGBTQ youth and now, seniors. Now, like uh, for LGBT housing for seniors, there's the, tri the tri was a triangle? That's in Hollywood, right? There's a LGBT senior center, I think, in Hollywood. Yeah. And which, are, the, are, so, there, are there any or one or two in the city of West Hollywood? So in the city of West Hollywood, we definitely, um, in my opinion, have a need for more senior housing in general. And by virtue of the city being 40% LGBTQ, then 40% of those people can right. <laughs> be LGBTQ. And, and um, there, there was, there is um, many different affordable housing uh, developments that we've invested in because we have an affordable housing trust fund where we uh, work with nonprofits to uh, fund. Oh, good. Uh, okay. those, building those. And um, we just recently did a, it wasn't a, um, LGBTQ senior housing, but it was a kind of like a memory care senior living facility mm -hmm. in the city, which was very controversial. Um, and that that passed, but it passed because legally the developer used our code and was able to utilize that for their benefit. Uh, okay, but um. One, a council member and I uh, gave direction to us to look at our zoning code to to uh, bring it up to date from um, to what our needs now so that um, we can utilize it in a different way that's more beneficial. Great. Now, now, Marjorie, you're you're right. You do Reiki, right? Oh yes, I've done Reiki since 1988. Oh yeah, and uh, oh, I can't remember the. I studied in Wisconsin. I don't even remember the woman I studied with, but. One of the fascinating things about that is she told me with Reiki one, because back then it cost so much money. Yeah. Right. Back in that day, it was a whole weekend to do Reiki one, mm -hmm. and then you would go do another like weekend long Reiki two, and it would cost you like five thousand dollars for that mm -hmm. one, and then to become a Reiki master it cost ten thousand dollars. Yeah. And so she said, you know everything you need to know with Reiki one, don't spend the money. Wow. And so that was fascinating. It worked for me for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. And then I got my Reiki 2 attunement. And boy, did that change everything. Yes, it does. Right? Uh -huh. and, you know, I taught at graduate school for 15 mm -hmm. years in acupuncture. And um, like, do I want to become a Reiki master and teach it and do that? Um, I learned to do distance healing with something else called orthobionomy. Mm -hmm. And so for that, you know, to understand the Reiki master is, is that. So. It's, I've had such a fascinating set of skills, and I'm, yeah. I'm so excited about you being a Reiki master because it's it's just it helps everything. Yeah. But yeah, coming, I, I was really excited about your question about aging. As as I'm getting older, I've just yeah. hit sixty. Um, you know, I am concerned about rent and housing for seniors. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, I would love to be able to live in in by my peeps, but I yeah. can't afford it. I know. So. That's that's big a big concern. So I'm I'm excited to hear that you're doing some work with these rent controlled senior centers or senior housing. Yeah, it's really important, yeah. and um, the pandemic really has created a uh, very difficult situation for everyone in every city who are renters, really. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be hitting a cliff soon with um, the state eviction moratoriums coming to an end in the city of west hollywood we have actually um we always uh gave the opportunity to our renters if they were having a financial crisis to have a one-time 
um, application if you're having let's say you lose your job or something happens you get up to a thousand dollars from the city oh. uh, with in partnership with um, a, another organ a couple of other organizations when the pandemic happened we did a um, emergency ordinance and also expanded that so that right now we're doing um, multiple rounds of uh, emergency funding oh, wow. possibilities for people who apply mm -hmm. and then it's and it's grants to to help stave off some of the pressures and help keep people in their homes. That's our priority mm -hmm. because when people lose housing, um, especially from our city since it is rent stabilized, it's very difficult for them to rent somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. And when people um, lose their homes and they become unhoused, it actually costs cities mm -hmm. and everybody else a lot more mm -hmm to help get them services than it right. is to keep people in their homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, the homeless problem is really big. I just read this article today that was disturbing. Somebody had to walk around an encampment, got hit by a car in the street. Oh, oh I, he I heard that on the news, that, too, yeah. a mother, yeah. And I was just like, how? She was suing. And and I've been, a, you know, I'm not a, a fearful person. Yeah. But I have had some fears driving mm -hmm. by some of those areas, and I know that's irrational. But is is that a problem that you're dealing with in West Hollywood, and is that well, something, we, something about? Well, we actually don't allow um, encampments, tents in our city um, because we focus all our resources on services, mm -hmm. and that's really our focus. Mm -hmm. And um, we have done an incredible job helping our unhoused um, population and getting them into permanent supportive housing. We have so contracts with several different uh, places to do that. And we're, we're now looking, um, and it is about time finally, for uh, we're doing a feasibility uh, study on finding a location in West Hollywood to build permanent supportive housing mm -hmm. and a, um, com a community center. And it's, it's gonna be a multifunctional building when it's built. Oh, so we're waiting for that no, to come that back to us. Exciting. It makes me want to like Thank sell you. Burbank and move to West Hollywood back again. <laughs> <laughs> I used to, I, so I've, um, I have a friend of mine that, that I have a lot of friends that live in WeHo, but one of my closest friends lived there. So I'm always over there. Yes. And I'm like, and I went to her mother's house. I mean, I sort of did memory lane, not on purpose, because I started out at her house and I yeah. had to drop something off at her mother's house. And then mm -hmm. I looped around mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, wow. You know, I used to live, oh my God, now I forgot the name. Shit. Um, Damn it. It's where the Okie Dog used to be on Santa Monica by Palmer Park, not Sierra Bonita. I live there too. Um, <laughs> Poinsettia, Vista. Vista. I Vista. lived on Vista. So okay. I lived Vista and, and, Sierra, and, um, and Sierra Bonita. Nice. And it was so, and it's so funny because I remember that's, and I came out here in 85 to go to law school. So mm -hmm. it's a, I haven't really spent a lot of time in WeHo besides going back and forth to board meetings or yeah. going, you know, to Paramount because I work on mm -hmm. that, you know, I work, you know, and going on location for productions, but to spend so much time there, it was really memory lane. I'm like, oh, look, the donut shop mm -hmm. is still there. Oh, look, the yeah. oh, the cleaners is still there. And it was like, oh, I kind of miss it. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I moved to Burbank because I wanted the hills, like the hills in quiet and escape. But, you know, there's a part of me, I was born in the city. So, yeah. I mean, on the East Coast. So it's like the part of me is like, I have one foot in the, the nature and one foot, I just can't get out of the city. Yeah, and our mm -hmm. city is such that you don't necessarily have to live in our city to no. be part of our community. No. And that's what the mm -hmm. beauty of West Hollywood really is. I mean, is. like yeah. I said, I mean, I've repeated for the hundredth time, I served on the Pride Board. Yeah. You know, I, I worked at CBS on Beverly and Fairfax, nice. you know, so I was part of the community, but I kept thinking, you know, I mean, am I allowed to do that? That's what I was saying, you know, part of the stuff yeah. that's available in the city of West Hollywood, I mean, you know, I'm a, I mean, look, I marched, I'm a trailblazer, I'm pretty involved with the LGBT career, always have been, you awesome. know, for since 85, 86. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I still want to be involved in that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're not in that community, you can still participate. And that's yes. why I was asking about the advisory board and, yeah. and other things like, for example, like a seat on city council. Mm -hmm. Or, or you were saying a couple of seats were being. Do they have to live in West Hollywood? For a city council, yes, you do need okay. to live in West Hollywood. But we have other boards. So women's advisory board, you don't have to live in the city. Um, the transgender advisory board, same thing. 
Um, my the social justice task force. The requirement was that you're a member of the BIPOC community who is a small business owner, a resident, um, or a uh, worker in the city. And there's the Disabilities Advisory Board. Also, same thing. Most of our advisory boards, you don't have to live at this Russian Advisory Board. Mm -hmm. uh, our commissions are different um, because. Some of them have uh, criteria that is uh, different and more complex. So we do have residency requirements, but not in all of them, but mm -hmm. in some. Wonderful. Well, um, you know, we're going to wrap it up. It's we have four minutes left. Mm -hmm. I, um, you know, la ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen the three ladies on Zoom, we're having t this is the second week in a row or the second time in a row we've had technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at Tony and he knows he's going to get an earful from me after <laughs> the show's over. Um, <laughs> But but um, I want to thank Amadeus, Cheryl, and Ronnie who popped on. And I'm sorry, you know, they're not on there. Ronnie, um, you can look her up on Facebook, Ronnie Lawiza. She's a, a coach and a, a, and I make fun of her. She's an exercise thing. Cheryl Murphy is a clairvoyant and a psychic. You can look her up, Cheryl with the C, on Facebook. And Amadeus also is a clairvoyant and an astrologer. And you can look her up. It's Amadeus, one name. Find them on Facebook. Um, for everyone here... Um, I just want to say thank you, Seppi, so much. Um, you are a, a white light in this community, but, and you're a complete, like, I'm so excited that you're part of the WeHo City Council and some of the initiatives that you put forth address a lot of the issues where, you know, let's face it, West Hollywood was always Boys Town, white Boys Town. And, you know, Obviously, they're making progress as the residents have also voted you in, have spoken that they want their voice to be heard. So thank you for being that one person and you have a trailblazer. I'm sure you'll open up the floodgates for others in the future, as well as, you know, everyone, everyone to feel welcome in the city of West Hollywood, which maybe in the past they didn't. So thank you for all your hard work that you're doing and we, we appreciate you. I appreciate thank you. you. And thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate you all. And and um, that is really uh, so important to me. And I, I feel so blessed and grateful that the city of West Hollywood elected me to serve. And I will continue doing as long as um, uh, I have that blessing from the voters. And where can people find you? Well, like, first of all, what's the... Um, website of the city of West Hollywood so people can find if they want to serve on any of the sure. advisory boards. It is weho.org. Um, that's it. That's it. Weho.org. Uh, people can find me. My handle is at Seppi Shine on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and council member Seppi Shine on Facebook. You can promote your wife if you'd like to, too. At oh, yeah. Point. At Ashley Shine. It's Ashley A-S-H- a S H L E I. Um, and you can find her from my page as well. And um, she is working on a short film called Sia, um, and I'm also executive producer and legal for it. And it is uh, we're going to shoot that in uh, September, and it is um, uh, centered around a romance story of a uh, queer black female couple who um, goes through uh, the tests and trials of going through the pandemic and the social justice movement and the effect on their relationship in life. Well, feel free to relate to Ashley. She's always welcome to come on the show as well. Thank you. And, you know, you really have broken all the roots of West Hollywood. <laughs> you're, you know, you're a woman of color. You're married to a woman of color. Yep. So, yay. Yay. <laughs> We're yes. and, you're a, and you're a lesbian. Yay. <laughs> Moving forward, West Hollywood. Um, and Margie, thank you. Uh, thanks for joining. Um, Cara, Cara will be back in September, right? Mm -hmm. I think Labor Day. Labor Day. So you'll, Carl will be back. Mar Margie and Cara um, share a flat together. Um, but Margie's like, you know, I can be on it if Cara. And I'm like, oh, my God, absolutely. So thank you for joining. Where can people find you? What do you do? You want to give out your number? You want to give out your website? Do what you need to do. Okay. I don't I do not do a website yet, but one day I may. Um, I, I'm a acupuncturist herbalist. I do shamanic work. Um, I work with conscious cannabis, and so uh, you can ask me about that. Um, you can reach me at my email address, which is the word healing, Q-I-L-A-C, at yahoo.com. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. And Mara Shane, the shoe girl? 
Yeah, um, <laughs> that's been my business lately. I've been um, decorating and making some badass heels for people, custom made. Um, MaraShaneArt.com. You can find me on Facebook as Mara Shane, um, Mara Shane Custom Designs on Facebook and on Instagram, it's Mara Shane Art. Thank you. Everyone, I just want to say thank you again for making Between the Sheets a success. We appreciate all of you. Um, you know, as my fave, Hillary Clinton. I love her still. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's you, 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 it's support. It's about teamwork. It's about women empowering women. Um, and it's about, you know, people that are setting examples like Mara and myself and Margie and Seppi. And some of us are in the public eye. And some of us aren't, but it doesn't need, mean that we shouldn't just still band together and fight the fight. We do need equality. We do need our rights to be heard. Um, and some of us do it a little louder than others. But never, ever, ever feel downtrodden because you always have support. You will always have support. Reach out, you know, again, if you're depressed or anxiety or, you know, you know you're just coming out. And it's a lot easier Look, I am going to say it's a lot easier coming out than when I came out mm -hmm. because there are much more facilities available. But you know what? I've always lived in a big city. And for those of you that are in smaller cities or countries where it's not okay, there is a place that is a safe zone. You just need to find it. So we're all here supporting you. We love you. We appreciate you. We appreciate Seppi for being a trailblazer for our rights as well as our exposure and our visibility, but we all are one, so let's stick together. And with that, please have a safe weekend. We'll see you in two weeks. In two weeks, my guests on the show will be Lisa Rubel and Andy Franklin. So we're gonna talk about music and real estate. How does that work? It always does here on Between the Sheets. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram, QTE Brat. Like the Facebook page, Between the Sheets Podcast, and listen to all the old shows and on like all the aggregators, Spotify, iTunes, and all that stuff. But if you want to watch us, watch us on the Between the Sheets YouTube channel, Between the Sheets with Gay and Bruno. Thank you, Tony. I appreciate it. And I will see you all in two weeks. Be safe, be well, and namaste as always.